Hi everyone. It looks like it's finally waited till March to start snowing around here. This is our first major snowfall. And just about all that snow you see on top of that table has come down since this morning, which is about seven hours ago. So yeah, crazy. Huge snowfall in the middle of March. I was so looking forward to spring. I guess I'll have to wait a little longer. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm going to be doing my February 2013 wrap up. I'm a few days late, sorry about that, but I've just not had the energy to sit in front of the camera and film. Um, work's been a little rough, and we, as you can see by the video just before this, we got hit by a ton of snow. I think it was like about, finished up about 11 inches of snow, and I'm just so sore from shoveling. <laughs> my sides are killing me. Anyway, I'm um, just going to kind of jump right into this wrap-up, and uh, I've got through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight books. Two of them are audios. The first one is just a re-listen for me, and it's uh, Jasper Forbes' One of Our Thursdays is Missing. This is book six in the series, and I've been kind of re-listening to all of the books in preparation for reading the most recent book that's out. That's called The Woman Who Died a Lot, and uh, it's one of those UK covers, which I just love. So it's a short little kind of hardcover, but can't wait to start this one. I'm hoping to get to it later this month. If not, it'll be the first one I pick up in April. The other audio I, I have is um, part one of a trilogy. It's a uh, middle grade series. Uh, I picked up the first two audio um, cassettes at uh, a library sale for like 50 cents a piece. So I was all over that. But I'm hoping I can track down book three. If not, I might have to see if I can find a copy of the book. Um, this is called A House Called Awful End by Philip um, Ardog. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Um, this is an unabridged edition. It's on two compact discs, so it's quite short. Uh, but it is very funny. If you could picture something along the lines of series of unfortunate events, if you like those books, you probably like this series. Uh, maybe a little bit more on the younger side on this one. But it's about a kid named Eddie whose parents have come down with this very strange disease. As it's described, it says it makes them turn yellow, crinkly around the edges, and smell of old hot water bottles. And they're under the care of a doctor who's got some very strange ideas for remedies. But the parents are worried that Eddie might catch the disease, so they decide to send him um, to go live for a while with his mad Uncle Jack and even madder Aunt Maud. <laughs> and he's going to be staying at their house called Awful End. So Eddie's a little concerned, first to be living with people that are labeled mad, let alone who've called their own house Awful End. But... A lot of madness, a lot of madness in this in this series. Really fun. Like I said, it had me had me laughing like crazy. So definitely worth picking up. Um, hope like I said, I hope I get to get a uh, hold of a copy of the third one. Um, and the the guy who does the audio is is fantastic. Um, I don't remember him from anywhere else. His name is Martin Rayner. Um, yeah, I think he's been off Broadway and stuff like that. But uh, he's great. He does, he does a really good job. Um, and I gave uh, this series four stars so far. Uh, the next one I read was for the YT Book Club. It's in my beat up old copy that I got from work without a cover. It's The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. And if you've missed the video, I, I got this copy free because it's a damaged copy and we're able to um, just send the cover back for credit. So I hung on to this in the hopes of maybe reading it one day. And when the YT Book Club picked it as their um, March read, uh, I decided to go ahead and start it. And it's kind of a, a Jack the Ripper kind of comes back type mystery. Someone, someone has is recreating the murders, and on the exact dates um, matching the anniversary dates of when the original murders took place. And the story follows this girl named Rory. She's um, finishing up her, her last year in school. Um, she's decided to go to London uh, along with her parents, who are teachers, and they're on sabbatical. So she's going to be staying at um, uh, like a boarding school over there. And it's sort of a totally different situation. Uh, she's um, she's some kind of funny situations. I thought, uh, she, I love, I love the whole bit with the cheese whiz. If you happen to read the book, I thought that was hilarious. Um, I happen to like cheese whiz, but her fascination with it is just hilarious. And when she's forced to, um, take a sport and ends up being thrust into field hockey, let alone as a goalie and having to wear all that equipment, I laughed at that too, because I know exactly what that was like. Not that I, I, I wanted to play sports, but I ended up being a field hockey goalie too. So picturing her running around with all that equipment, I could definitely relate. The overall, uh, I like the character overall. Um, like I said, um, really interesting. And the, the setting, London, very well described. Very, I felt like I was there. 
But the overall story takes a bit of a twist midway through, and I don't know. I, I think the, the overall plot had potential, but it, it kind of let me down in the end, so I only just gave it about three stars. And the next book is The Water Wars. This is by Cameron Strachur. I did a review on this on my channel if you'd like to see more detail. Um, it's kind of an apocalyptic type story in a world where water is very scarce. There are fines for wasting it. And um, prison sentences if you take more than your um, your quota. And it's about a girl named Vera and she meets this boy named Kai who says he knows about some secret water source. And then one day he disappears. And it's sort of a, a search for what happened to him. Did somebody kidnap him? A lot of back and forth in this book didn't seem to go anywhere. Just a lot of repetitive plot points throughout the whole thing that was really quite a letdown. I, I thought it had such potential and it just never really went anywhere. Failed to quench my thirst. Yeah, I had to go there. Anyway, I only gave us one two stars. Uh, the next one uh, was a book I received in a Goodreads giveaway and I've since bought myself my own copy, finished copy, this is Ever After, book 11 in the Thursday Next series by Kim Harrison. I absolutely love, love, love the series, and this was an excellent book. Probably one of my favorite ones in the whole series so far. And it focuses more on our main character, Rachel Morgan, and uh, Trent. He's another character who she's had a difficult relationship with through most of the series, mostly hating his guts through most of the way. But... It, it really focuses on the two characters throughout this, and there's the whole thing with the ever after. She has somehow damaged the lines, the ley lines running through, and energy is seeping out of the ever after, and it's drastically shrinking. And the demons who occupy ever after are out for her blood. They, they want to kill her for what she's damaged. So she's got to try and find a way in this story to repair the ley lines. The thing is, she did damage them, but not to the extent that... that uh, is occurring now. Someone has damaged them further to lay the blame on her and get the demons against her. So it's a really interesting uh, to find out who that is, how she can fight it, is she going to survive the whole situation, and where her relationship is going with Trent. So a lot of action in this one. Just love the characters and can't wait for the next one. Um, the next ones I read were pretty much graphic novel, manga type books. Um, I picked up Death Note. This is, uh, we'll try this again. Story by Tsugumi Oba and art by Takeshi Obata. Probably the best I've said that so far. Anyway, I posted a full review on this one as well. I think it's just one about a day or two ago. This is the black edition, and this is volume one. So they are black all the way around on the pages. Um, of course, it's a black and white manga, except for a couple pages at the very beginning. Um, you see this main character here. And the story is about uh, a young boy. His name is Light Yagami. He comes across this notebook that was dropped at the school grounds. He picks it up and sees the word death note. And inside it says that if you write a name of a person and you picture their face as you're writing the name, that person will die. And he thinks it's some kind of sick joke. And he ends up testing it. And next thing you know, it leads him on this unbelievable downward spiral. But if you want to find out more about it... Um, I say, go ahead and check out the review I posted on it. I absolutely love this. I've already started the second bind up, and I've heard there's a lot. I've heard most of the comments I've gotten um, on that review were just people that just absolutely love this the series. So it's got a lot, a lot of good, good reviews on it. So definitely worth picking up, especially if you're if you're a fan, a fan of manga. And I never know if it's manga or manga. I may be mispronouncing it. Please correct me if you know. <laughs> um, but if you're a fan of it. You'll definitely love this one, and if you're looking for something new to try out, definitely worth trying this one. So I gave this one five stars. And the next two books are actually uh, kind of sequels to each other. You could buy them as a... I, I just rented them up from the library, but you can get them as a complete bound up. But uh, this is the Mouse series. This is Mouse 1. And it is a survivor's tale. Uh, My Father Bleeds History. It's by Art Spiegelman. And the second book is Mouse 2, A Survivor's Tale, and Here My Troubles Began. Um, these are also graphic novels. And what they are are sort of like biography, memoir, and graphic novel all rolled into one. Now, Art Spiegelman is a cartoonist, and he decided he wanted to tell his father's tale. Um, well, actually, his, his, both his parents. They were Jews living in Poland during the Nazi occupation. And the first book, uh, Survivor's Tale, documents their history from when they first meet. His father's name is Vladek and his mother is Anya. 
it's from when they first meet all the way up to their arrival at Auschwitz. And it's, um, that's the biography part. You hear the story being told by Vladek and, uh, of all the, just the unbelievable struggles they had to go through just to get by. He, he has a fairly decent, like, textile business, and then the Germans come in, and then no Jews can own a business, and now he's got to find a way to survive and, and support his family, and you just see, um, it, it gives you a really, like, first-hand account of what it would be like to have lived during that time. And the second part is sort of a side-by-side -side story is um, our Spiegelman's relationship with Vladek as he's um, speaking with his elderly father. His father's kind of um, in poor health. He's a diabetic. He's, you know, he's been through quite a bit. And he's currently living in Rigo Park with his second wife, Mala. Um, and he's no longer with us. You have to find, you know, find out what happened to her by reading the story. But, um... Art and Vladek don't have a really great relationship. You can see it's kind of strained. Vladek is a difficult person to live with. Um, even his second wife says so. He's very stingy. But as you're reading the story, you see how how that his past has sort of made him into that person of what he had to go through. And it's just it's just really fascinating. Um, in the back, you can see um, areas of Poland where they're from. These are um, Vladek and, and, and Art listening to his father's tale. Uh, Rigo Park is the, the map. This is where Vladek is currently living. And the story, if, as you're reading it through, you notice that um, all the Jews are depicted as mice and the Germans are cats. It's sort of, um, it's, you know, the cats, the, it's the, their, their prey are the, the mice. And it's sort of a way of uh, how the, the Jews were kind of dehumanized during that. So he kind of took the humanity aspect out of it and did like animals for all the main characters of oh. There's, I think, uh, the Poles, I think, are, are pigs. The French are, are um, frogs. They're all depicted in, in that, that manner. And in the second book, um, and here my troubles began, that's where the story takes place. He's um, already arrived at Auschwitz. And, in fact, on the back of it, you can see there's Auschwitz here, Auschwitz II, and that's where the women's barracks, and about how far apart his parents were. Uh, it's just it's just really really moving and disturbing at times. Um, fascinating how he managed, like I said, to survive, but um, really really well depicted. So both of these books I gave five five stars to. I um, can give it a rating. It's it's just definitely worth reading uh, to find more more about that period in history and a really interesting way to to show it. In addition to those two books, um, still kind of currently kind of skimming my way through it, I have kind of kind of have to read this pretty fast because it's due back at the library, but this is a book called Metamouse, and it is also by Art Spiegelman. Um, kind of behind here, well, they've removed it and put it to the back, is it also comes with a DVD. I haven't actually had a chance to check that out, but this is all about his um, making of this particular um, series. And it has a lot of the sketch work in it, and he's sort of like being interviewed. I'm not sure who's doing the interview, but it's a it's a, a look inside the modern classic. Um, yeah, it doesn't say. I'm not sure exactly who's doing the interviewing, but it's like a question and answer, and he'll he'll um, he deals with different points and how he uh, decided to come up with these. You know, in fact, there's a major part here. Let me see if I can find it. This part here explains why mice. Why did he choose to depict the Jews as mice? Uh, one of the mo most moving parts of this book, though, and I will show you this really quickly, is two pages in it. And this is a branch of the Spiegelman family tree at the start of World War II. And you can see it's pretty full here. And down at the bottom are um, Vladik and Anya and their first son, Rishu. I think that's how it's pronounced. And he was born um, just prior to the occupation. And then at the end of World War II, and that's the family that remains. All the empty white squares are people that did not survive, um, did not survive the Holocaust. And as you can see, their son is missing. He did not survive. So Art is actually born after, after World War II. And it's just, this one's really fascinating how he, it breaks down uh, all the different aspects of it, why comics, why he decided to tell the story as a comic, in the comic format, because that's just something that's, that's one of his strengths, he is a cartoonist, 
But definitely worth picking this one up too. If you if you have read these or want to learn more about them, uh, definitely worth picking that one up as well. So those are the books I've read this month and kind of still reading. And hope you guys read something really good. And I will talk to you later. Bye bye.